Welcome back everybody to me talking about stuff. And this is not the Malazan video that I was prom that I promised for today, <clears throat> the ass sale video. That one will come later on tonight. Don't worry, I still plan on recording it. I even made some notes. <laughs> no, this is the other thing that I wanted to do. And uh, by this I mean I've been doing this for o over a year now, like like barely a year and we're almost done with 2021 and like everyone and their dog is doing like the year in review and books to look forward to to 2022 and all of that stuff and obviously me being me I'm like I can probably do that or maybe not and I figured let's just sit down have us a ramble and look at like <clears throat> all the stuff that happened this year <clears throat> where I feel I am right now where I feel the channel is right now is my what I mean with that, and um, where I think it all may be going in the near future because we're almost done with Malazan. There's like three videos on Assay left, and then we've spoken about like I've rambled about all the available Malazan novels right now, and yes, the novella's not, but that's it. Um, so, <laughs> what will happen after that? Will I ride into the sunset on a Kachain Chimal? Actually, that would be really fucking cool, but I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, so, um, that's sort of what I want to do today. We'll see how long this will be, how far I can do this before my camera breaks over, or whatever, and, um, yeah. Uh, cheers. All right, so um, let's do this. Um, I figured I'll do this in like two parts. Uh, the first part will be about books and stuff, uh, like like content and um, which books I'll maybe read next year, all of that stuff. And uh, the second part will be like more generic, like um, channel stuff and I don't know. So those those of you that are only interested in figuring out what kind of books I'll be reading next year, <laughs> um, if you want to, you know, still follow me or whatever, that's the part that you need to watch. And then you can just like all click off while I'll get happily drunk on my own mead. <laughs> so I, I guess that's what we'll do in this order. All right, now, um, as I've said, this year I did a shit ton of Malazan books, right? Like, all of them. We started out with Gardens of the Moon around New Year's last year. Not last year, like this year. And um, I guess I was done with, like, looking at it, I was done with the Malazan Book of the Fallen somewhere in June or May even. And... Uh, <clears throat> Then we went through Carcanus and the Path to Ascendancy, um, slotted in uh, The God is Not Willing when it came out. Um, and uh, after, you know, after uh, after Carcanus, or like those two Carcanus books that are out, we went deep into the Cam Asselmond, and we're almost done with Cam Asselmond. Now, for some reason, it took me longer to go through the Malazan, to through the novels of the Malazan Empire. That's not because they're not such good books. It's more because, you know, life intervened. I had to, you know, deal with myself, my life and mental health. I obviously also did a lot of other stuff during the year, right? I, I went and I did... Um, look at um, the original um, trilogy, original First Law trilogy. I went and talked about Tolkien, about The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, and The Silmarillion. I talked about some other books that came out this year that I really enjoyed or like was looking forward to by favorite authors. Stuff like, um, you know, um, Inhibitor Phase by... Um, Alistair Reynolds, whom I love a lot, Stephen er uh, Neil Stevenson's new book, um, and uh, Kim Stanley Robinson's book on climate change, um, uh, Ministry for the Future and Termination Shock. Um, we did that. Um, what else did I talk about? Obviously, my love for La Vie Tidor and By Force Alone and The Hood. Some other stuff that I feel got under is underappreciated. Stuff like um, Wilding Hall by Elizabeth Hand or um, uh, Waking the Moon by Elizabeth Hand or, you know, stuff like that. Um, some Ian MacDonald, um, uh, King of Morning, Queen of Day, or the other way around. Um, <laughs> Queen of Morning, King of Day, that one, um, which I really love. That kind of stuff. So I try to put in some stuff that is non-Malazan because 
I don't want this to become just Malazan channel. Don't get me wrong, I love Malazan. It's sort of what got the channel started, but I feel there's other books out there. And I've been reading fantasy for a long time, and um, and science fiction as well, so I figured I'll just like draw some of that stuff in there as well. For example, we talked about a lot of like Black Company, just like this morning I uploaded the well, the next one after taking a long break from that one, which is She's the Darkness. And I'd love to do more Black Company uh, content in the near future. Um, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, um, what I wanted to say is that with A Sale almost done, as I said, I finished reading chapter 10 today. I'll go for like 11, 12 and 13 tomorrow and 14, 15 and the epilogue on a Wednesday. I assume it's Wednesday. <clears throat> Maybe I'll stretch it out and... Uh, We'll, like, finish it on Thursday. We'll see how all of that goes. I'll, I'll figure it out as I go along. But we'll be done with a sale by the end of the year. And then what? Right? That's, like, the big question out there for me. Is like, what do I do? Do I end the channel? Am I done? Um, <laughs> do I pull an 8-Covey? And it's like, I am not yet done. We don't know. Um, well, I don't know. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out these things. So I'll just like put out some ideas that I've had and you can tell me what you think. You can make suggestions in the comments if you feel like it. And I'd love to hear from you throughout the entire thing, right? That's like the thing. See, I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. The first thing I should have done is like, thank you for actually staying with me throughout the year or joining me throughout the year, which I absolutely fucking appreciate. So thank you very much for that. And uh, yeah, please let me know what you think uh, about like the stuff that I'm going to outline now for next year, like ideas and stuff, and we'll see if some of that can actually be done or not. So um, let's look at that. So, um, <clears throat> What's the next big series that I'll read? Uh, I was thinking about that. There's a bunch of stuff that I want to read in detail. I still want to do those like more or less daily reading vlogs. See, maybe I'll maybe I'll, maybe I'll kind of slow them down depending on like how life works out. But I do feel that doing these like sort of reading vlogs kind of thing, read along vlogs where I just like free wheel and ramble about stuff that I associate free association with all these things that I read. Um, really helped me focus while reading a book. And I think that's 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 partly, probably the largest part of why I do these things. It's like, for me to actually think about what I'm doing while reading, it's very easy for me to, you know, just like blast through a book and then, you know, uh, forget most of it after a quick, you know, even by ending the book or whatever. So this is certainly like throughout the year has helped me to read deeper concentrate and focus more on the kind of stuff that I'm reading, so I'll, I'll definitely continue that in some way or, or other. Will I do, like, actual reviews? I don't think so. Like, I mean, let me know if you want that. I'm, I'll be careful on that. I was planning to do, like, a review, like, not like a review, like a video on, like, my thoughts on reviewing books and versus criticizing books or doing uh, criticism and all the stuff that I'm doing here. Um, that video has obviously not yet materialized, <laughs> but it's certainly something that I was thinking about. Um, so that might just come and then maybe I'll, like, if you want me to do, like, up you know, new releases, reviews kind of things like everyone else in BookTube, not everyone, but like most people on BookTube are doing, I can certainly go and see if I can pick up a few, like, upcoming, like, not upcoming, like, new releases, like, close to, like, their release date and look at them. I've, I've done one or two of those this year. I mean, obviously, I talked about uh, Daniel Green's um, first novella, Breach of Peace, and... Uh, I, I had fun with that. Um, we'll see. Um, it's one thing, but that's still not answering the question of will I do more, um, what kind of series will I do? Now, obviously, there's the big one that I've always teased I might actually go into, and that would be The Wheel of Time. Now, I guess most of you interested in that kind of thing have already gone and watched the show. I have not. <laughs> I will not, at least not for a while. Um, I have often said that I read the first novel, uh, Eye of the World. I read it, like, twice at least. And I, um, like, sh I read it in German, like, years ago, the first no novel. And I think I started the second one. 
but I didn't get through the second one. And then I tried to do it in English and I read Eye of the World and then I was so annoyed once I, once I was through with that that I did not continue. Um, I have, however, spent 14 cred credits on Audible on that whole thing years ago because I'm the kind of person who does not really DNF stuff. I, can't, I feel really bad about DNFing stuff. And I guess at some point I'll read that thing. So yeah, I guess I'll be reading Wheel of Time next year at some point. I'm not sure if I can actually do that one as a read-along vlog kind of thing. I guess it'll be faster than Malazan, at least in the beginning, because there's not that much going on in those books, to be fair. At least in Eye of the World. They will also be different in tone because I have a lot of issues with at least Eye of the World. So those would be a bit more spicy, I think. <laughs> we'll see. So that's that's an option uh, for like something that I can do and that I will do next year. I'm not sure if I'll start with it in January or if I start with it later on. That's sort of like the question here that we need to figure out. Um, so yeah, Wheel of Time. I guess it'll happen in some form or another. Um, <laughs> so if you feel like um, starting a reread anyway real soon, then, you know, why not join me on that and have, like, discussions on all the terrible things in those books or all the beautiful things in those books, because I'm pretty, pretty sure there's actually good stuff in there somewhere. Very, very, very deep. I guess. Um, so that's something. There's other things that I'm, I'm, I'll definitely go and continue or like wrap up the Black Company books. And um, there's more Glenn Cook that I could go into. Um, the Dread Empire series. I've read most of those like years ago. Um, so it would be a reread, at least for the largest part. But I... I could do that. Um, there's other things, like I've recently read, um, finished uh, The um, uh, the Expanse. I, I finished reading uh, Leviathan Falls. And being the kind of person that I am, I feel really bad about just doing a video on Leviathan Falls without ever having talked about any of the previous books. So, I don't know, maybe that's something that I could do and go through those again and do a reread of The Expanse. I'm, not sure if I want to do that right now because I just finished the last book and while it was highly entertaining, it's not something that I need to reread immediately. Something that I need to reread sooner than later, however, is the Culture series by Ian M. Banks. I've read all of them a while ago, but I, I feel those are definitely books that would very much profit from me giving them the, like, read-along, daily reading vlog kind of treatment, because there's so much going on in those novels. Um, so that's definitely something that I feel will happen sometime next year, if I continue doing videos, which, you know, who the fuck knows. Um, <laughs> so that's another one. Then there's going to be um, <laughs> some classics. Um, because, um, Audible is finally releasing new audiobooks of Elric novels by uh, Michael Moorcock. I've had, like, very weird older audiobooks of those and read them years ago, but they're do a reread. And having, like, new produced high-quality audiobooks of those, unabridged audiobooks of those, is something that I was looking forward to and I was waiting for a long fucking time. They're coming next, next month, I think beginning of Jan, like somewhere in January or like early February, they're like going to be released. And then that's something that will happen for sure. Like doing some Elric stuff, looking at the Eternal Champion, looking at what Michael Moorcock has brought to the table when it comes to fantasy in general. Um, so yeah, that, that'll that certainly happen in the near future. Then something I just saw today, um, Audible is finally releasing. There's just open pre-orders for Jack Vance's Demon Prince series. And I'm, just, I mean, I still need to talk about um, Maduk and The Green Pearl, the two other Leoness books, and I'll do that definitely in the next couple of weeks, I assume, but The Demon Prince is Jack Vance I haven't read yet, and I'm so fucking excited about that. <laughs> so that, that will certainly happen once it comes out, because everyone needs more Jack Vance in their life, and I'm pretty sure you all know that, but maybe you have forgotten it for a moment, so it bears some reminding. You all need more Jack Vance in your life, so that's something that I think might be interesting for next year, books that I'm going to look at. 
Um, <laughs> so why is there no, no new releases? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm terrible with that kind of thing, right? So I looked at like lists of releases for next year and I watched a bunch of booktubers and they're like 22 books for 22 or 30 um, releases that I'm looking forward to and I feel like shit, but I know barely any of those authors, and they don't sound that interesting to me. Like, like literally, there's the next part of like the Shadow of the Gods series um, by John Gwynn is about to come out in April, apparently. Um, but since I didn't really love that first one, I'm only mildly curious about it. <laughs> and there's like f very little of like authors that I would consider like my favorite authors that I. I'm like super hyped about for next year. So maybe I'm just missing a shit ton of books. Who knows? Um, it's very likely I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> but that's sort of why I'm looking at like a lot of like rereads or catching up on older series, right? I've, I've read the first, I've read the Assassin's Apprentice trilogy by Robin Harm, and I've read the Life Ship Traders trilogy by Robin Ha, but I've never gone deeper into the realm of the Elderlings. So that's something that I might do. Catch up on that one. Look for more, like, standalone stuff. <laughs> you know, those kind of things. I don't know. Um, if you have, like, books that you think I should definitely go and read and that I haven't spoken about yet, um, you know, you can always tell me in the comments and I'll, I'll certainly think about it and chances are pretty good that I'll actually pick them up at some point or another. Um, I mean, yeah, Chronicles of Thomas Covenant by uh, Stephen R. Donaldson. They're also on the list. I've already downloaded the audiobooks. That will happen at some point. Um, Gene Wolfe. Um, I finally got the Latro in the Mist trilogy, Soldier of, uh, you know, the Mist, Soldier in the Mist, um, Soldier of Sidon, and Soldier of um, Areta. Areta? <laughs> Yeah, Latin, right? <laughs> Point is... <laughs> no, um, Greek, actually. Point is, I'll, I'll definitely um, go and read those and probably maybe even talk about it. We'll see. That's like the other thing. It's like not every book that I read is something I need to talk about on the channel. We'll, we'll see. I might, I might do something like... Uh, I, if you think that's worth it, like do like a weekly update or a monthly update of like, oh, this is all the stuff that I've recently read. And then you can tell me if you feel like if you want me to actually expand <laughs> on any of those. So that, that might be a thing. I can't do like a TBR because I barely know what I'll read next week. So that doesn't work. But it might work like retrospectively when I'm like, yeah, this is what I read recently. Do you think, do you, are you interested in any of that stuff? We'll see. Um, uh, well, I mean, that's, that's like just an idea that I just had right now. So we'll, we'll see about that. But that's sort of like the rough plan for, um, book stuff. For like actual books that I'll be looking at and talking about. Like, obviously, if The Gistal by Cam Asselmont will come out next year, um, which, you know, <laughs> the signs are conflicting on that one. <laughs> if, but if it comes out, I'll definitely read it as soon as possible, and I'll talk about it in all the detail I worries, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I want to read that book. I want to know all about it. So that's something that I'm, like, looking forward to, but you, you, I don't know when it comes out. So, you know, we'll see. But that's sort of like the books that I have sort of roughly mapped, well, not mapped out, like stuff that I feel like I might want to talk about in the nearish, nearish future. I could go back and do like a reread of all of the um, um, Revelation Space Universe by um, Niels, uh, Niels, Niels, Alistair Reynolds, or I could go back and do a reread of The Baroque Cycle by Neil Stevenson, something that I've not done in a while and... Um, is one of my favorite like historical novels that I like out there. It's really good because you know it's a topic that I'm interested in. The era it's talking about is an era I'm very interested in, and uh, Neil Stevenson, one of my favorite authors, so that might be worth looking at. I could also go back and do some more like talk about classics on like not unrecognized, but you know underappreciated classics of the fantasy genre stuff like Poole Anderson's Three Hearts and Three Lions. Um, maybe some Anne McCaffrey uh, Dragon Riders of Pern stuff. There's 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 stuff out there. Wait, there's way too much stuff out there for me to actually do all of it. But I'm you know, I feel there's a lot of like booktubers out there that do a lot of like upcoming releases, new releases, um, a lot of self-published stuff, whatever, and. 
I don't have the energy to keep up with all of that stuff and I don't want to be like the 10th person talking about the same book out there because I feel the others are doing doing their thing already and I just like come across as like, I don't know, an interloper or whatever, so I'm probably not going through that direction. But that's sort of like all the books that I have in mind right now to look at. Maybe more, you know, if like a new Cameron Hurley book comes out, I'll definitely go and read that. There's a new Catherine Valente, M. Valente book coming out in April that I've tentatively, you know, marked as like, I'll probably go and read that. <laughs> we'll see. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, those are the books that I want to like tentatively talk about. I might also do stuff on the record label if you're interested in that, seeing how that kind of stuff continues. Um, we'll see. But that's sort of the, roughly the plan for next year, I guess. So if you're only interested in like which books should you actually get a head start on so you can argue with me because I'll probably get all things wrong about them, then that's it. Go go polish up on the on the wheel of time and uh, maybe and the culture that's sort of the big ones for like read along stuff that i feel like plus all kinds of other stuff if you're interested in and if you have other suggestions go drop them in the comments yell at me and whatnot and i'll just say this again it's like yes i do have a patreon we'll talk about that in a second um being a Patreon backer does not give you, like, premium access when it comes to deciding which books I'll read. Now, I'll read all the comments and then I'll make a gut decision or I'll just ro roll the dice on it. Very likely, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, but that's sort of, like, where the books are. Um, let me know what you think. But please tell me which were your favorite videos or, like, topics that I talked about last year. Like, that would really interest me. Like, because, you know, numbers... Um, uh, Viewer numbers um, are one thing, but I'd really like to just like actually hear your opinion because in the end, that's what matters. The people that are still with me right now, the, their opinion matters more than people that clicked on the whole like defending Steven Erickson versus other booktubers, whatever stuff in May. Was it May? April? Whatever. Around Easter, I think. <laughs> And just clicked on that once because they felt I would, you know, go and attack uh, people they already hated. That's not what I want this channel to be. And so I'm asking you guys that are still with me at the end of the year what you prefer to do. Oh, and yeah, of course, I'll continue the, the Discworld read-along. I'm sorry I'm lacking behind with, like, both the Reaper Man and Witches Abroad videos. I'll do those this, this week. And we'll have our chat on Small Gods on Sunday. So if you still want to, you know, pitch in, Small Gods is a great start. Um, it's, an, it's a standalone one. It deals with a religion. It's a bit more serious. It's a fantastic Discworld novel. We'll have us a chat on the... Um, like, with those that are up to it on Sunday, the 2nd of January, um, 6 p.m. my time, which is, is that Central European? No, it's, I don't know. That thing, <laughs> that thing we have in Germany right now, time-wise. <laughs> um, so, and if you want to join in, then maybe join, I mean, yeah, join, leave me a comment down there, or join the Underbridge Burners Discord and the read-along chat there, and then we'll, um, Get you set up on that, and that would be really glorious. All right, that's it for books. Um, let's talk about channel stuff and all the other stuff now, right? All right, so you're with me still. That's fantastic. Thank you once again. I'll just do this <laughs> properly now. Once again. There's, according to YouTube, 685 of you right now um, subscribe to this channel. I guess maybe 50 of you will actually watch this video. Maybe a bit more. That would be fantastic. <laughs> but anyway, that's about 684 more people than I was expecting when I started the channel a year ago. I mean, I started it in November. So let's look at that for a bit and where the whole thing in general is going and how it feels and that stuff, right? So, as you may know, I started the channel because I hung out on Iskar Jarak's Discord. Um, 
the unabridged burners uh, for like a month or two, oh, probably like a month and a bit. And then Iskar put out the um, this challenge, uh, challenge of like, can you do like a synopsis of the Malazan Book of the Fallen that is spoiler free? And one evening after I had a few beers, I just like switched on the camera and rambled into it for 20 minutes. And the rest, as they say, is history, by which I mean far too long and depressing. <laughs> Right? <laughs> anyway, um, my point is that that's sort of where the whole thing started, and then I did a bit more stuff, talked about some, you know, Conan the Barbarian, and Robert E. Howard, and Clark Ashton Smith, and Fritz Lieber, Lieber. Um, things that I always wanted to talk about that are not exactly Malazan. I mean, there was more Malazan videos that I did, I did something of a like, kind of response to Andy Smith's um, Malazan as postmodern um, video <laughs> and, you know, things like that. Um, and then, like, in January, because at the time I was really not in a good, like, state mental health-wise and whatnot, I fell into, like, a super dark hole over the, uh, the Christmas holidays. I figured I'll do something to drag my ass out of it, which is go and do a reread of the Malazan Book of the Fallen, do some knitting, you know, crafty stuff, so I have something to do, do something productive, that kind of thing. And I'll do those daily videos to get some sort of schedule going, right? To keep myself on some form of schedule and not just like, you know, fall day deeper down to that hole. And that's sort of how the whole thing started last year, like around New Year's. I, I mean, obviously I didn't have a New Year's party because of like the whole like plague shit going down. And uh, so I I had time to just read Malazan Book of the Fallen every day and sit down I mean, and do some knitting and then I knit the scarf for a friend and uh, <laughs> then I knit the cape for Cal at Really Good and Kind. Um, the channel kind of grew and it grew fast, really fast in the beginning. I'm mean, not super fast, others grew faster than me. At the same time, the other like Malaz tuber people like obviously uh, Counselor of Moonspawn and the High Fist, Ruth and Bud, um, they totally overtook me really, like Ruth and Bud overtook me really fast. Um, Niffle Rock joined in a bit later and also overtook me like kind of, when it comes to like numbers and shit really quickly. Um, but I, I, I just kept on plotting and doing that that thing. I did some, you know, more like standalone videos on specific a aspects of the Malazan Book of the Fallen. They obviously always did much better than the than the read along thing. But I I felt the read along thing was like gained some sort of momentum, not momentum, but like inertia. Is inertia the right word? You know, the point is, it, it felt like once I've gotten far enough into the whole thing, it felt like. I need to finish this. I need to finish the whole thing before I can do something else. Um, and that's interesting to me because I'm not the kind of person who usually finishes stuff. I start a fuck ton of, pop, of, of projects every day and every month and whatnot, and I barely ever finish one. I usually tend to sabotage myself before things actually like wrap up and whatnot, and then I just like my energy drops off and I stop. So I actually got getting through the entirety of the Malazan Book of the Fallen and still doing videos was a huge step. Getting through Carcanus, well, not that huge of a step because it's only two books. Still, um, getting through Path to Ascendancy, another like step. Getting through <laughs> through the novels of the Malazan Empire is probably the, the hugest step there because I really struggled in the second half of the year. I don't know why, there's all kinds of stuff, probably the, the whole fact that the plague is still not over, <laughs> going, doing this like every day, um, having to, you know, you can't question mental health that easily and stuff like that. I, I just really struggled over the last half of the year. And at the same time, and that's like sort of the other thing, is like the numbers like stagnated brutally. Like I gained like, to I came to like 500 subscribers sometime in like May or June and reached 600-ish around July, I think, July, somewhere between July and August, and now we're at 685. And I appreciate each and every one of you 685 people, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly thankful, I've never expected that, but seeing the numbers slow down, basically grind to a halt, has had a huge impact on my mental health in that regard, and like my motivation. 
Because, you know, it's like, it's so easy and every, every YouTuber out there always says like, you know, we're, we're doing this for ourselves and not for the numbers, not for the money and whatnot. It's like, of course, I don't do this for the money because there's no money in it. Um, but <laughs> the point is, I would be lying if I'd say that the numbers don't impact how I feel about these things. Like, obviously, it's not for the numbers, but seeing numbers grow seeing like comments and lots of comments having discussions in the comments seeing likes and all, all those kind of things they always kind of you know that kind of feedback triggers a lot of like endorphins and whatnot and they're like yeah i can do this it, it feels great and when that stuff like peters out it's very difficult to keep going it, it, it which is you know really dumb because you know we're still talking about like i don't know 30 people watching a video or 15 people watching a video. That's not a lot of people. That's not, you know, you know what I mean? Point is, once again, I'm, I'm thankful for each and every one who watched those videos, but I'm saying that it, it certainly made making videos more difficult in the second half of the year, plus all the other stuff that went on at the same time in my, you know, general mental health and health and whatnot. Um, um, so I'm, I'm, probably more like more proud of like actually getting through the novels of the Malazan Empire um, at this point because it was it I was closer to to just giving up in the second half of the year than I was in the first half of the year um, so I'm, I'm I'm a bit proud of that <laughs> and I'll be like I mean I hope I'll just like actually don't fall into some kind of a hole once I finished a sale once I'll once I'll finish a sale in two days but that danger is definitely there, like, really. It's like, it might just happen, it's like, you know, I'll go off, visit some friends over New Year's, and, um, well, a couple of friends, very small, and everyone's safe, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not going to spread the virus. I'll test before, and I'll, you know, I'm vaccinated and boosted and everything, so don't worry there. <laughs> I am still a responsible kind of person in that regard, at least. Um, but yeah, who knows if I'll have the energy to actually get up and do, like, and start reading Wheel of Time on the 2nd or 3rd of January. I have no idea. Like, we'll, we'll see. So yeah, while once again... I do really appreciate each and every one of you watching. I am incredibly thankful and so forth. I feel it would be dishonest to say that the, the slowing down did not impact me in the last, in the second half of the year. So I naturally also thought about like why that is the case. Obviously it's like, <laughs> I don't want to change all of my content and all of that, right? It's like, I want to continue these read-alongs because I definitely do those for myself in a lot of ways because they help me read books more um, focused and uh, so forth. So that's very much what I'm doing in any case. But is there stuff that I could do and change? That's sort of like the big question there. And I, I looked, obviously, I sometimes look at other channels. I try not to do that because it feels like that might just, like, only take me down. But, yeah, of course, I'll um, think about that in from time to time. And I've certainly done less um, collab stuff in the last half of the year. And I feel collabs are definitely something that will um, grow channels. So I definitely need to think about how to do collabs more in the near future. And collabs are a good way to do that because, you know, you basically pool um, <clears throat> your viewers. It's like two two people with different audiences or like obviously some overlap if we're all talking books or whatnot. But like um, basically show each other the other's channel and so forth. You know, like shout outs and all of that. But, you know, I feel collabs do that in a, an extremely well way because you get to actually see the other person on screen for a while. And I did a lot of other those collabs in like the first half of the year, right? I did. I talked to AP Canavan, the Critical Dragon, before most other people, <laughs> apart from Philip Chase. I did obviously talk to um, the Counselor a bunch of times. I talked to Ruth and Bad. I talked to Iskar Jarak, Sarge. I talked yeah, to you know, you know everyone within that sphere. What I, however, did not do, and I feel that's sort of like part of the issue for me right now, is like actually do collabs out, like a lot of collabs outside of the really small Malaz tube circle. And that's sort of like the question, I guess, that I'm facing at this point. Like, do I stay within that small audience of people talking about Malaz and just Malaz, or do I actually go 
out of that, because if I want to go out of that, I need to reach people that are not only interested in Malazan. And I sometimes don't know how to do that, because I'm not good with, like, social interaction and networking and stuff. It's like, I... I would need to go out and talk to other other booktubers and ask them for collabs and then I'm stuck there and I'm like, I don't know how to do that. Like, wait, wouldn't it sound dumb if I contacted someone, contacted someone who's like asked and, uh, you know. So that's something that I need to figure out in the near future to figure out if like maybe I can ask some like larger creators if they want to talk to me, <laughs> even though I'm just a very, very small channel with only 600 view, 85 subscribers. But maybe, maybe someone feels like I have something interesting to bring to the table. Who knows? Um, the other thing, obviously, is um, content that goes beyond this. Like, you know, I had that long conversation with AP and Steven Erickson. That was great. I'd love to do something like that again. I'd love to talk to more authors. But yeah, I need to contact those as well and ask. And I usually, um, and this may come as a surprise, but I'm usually too shy to do that. I feel like too, I'm too awkward to do that. Like, write an author and it's like, hey, would you like to actually talk to this super small <laughs> booktuber or whatever? Um, so I don't know how to actually change that in the future, but that's definitely something that I wish I would do more because I feel that would be interesting. I'd love to talk to some of the authors that I've been usually uh, talking up here on this channel. I'd love to talk to someone like Cameron Hurley, and I know she's probably the most approachable of the ones that I would love to talk to. I'd love to talk to someone like Lavi Tidar. That would be fantastic, but, you know, <clears throat> we'll see if I can actually muster that part of it. Then there's obviously other sides of uh, of the whole problems. I'd like, you know, do I put more stuff, like, more emphasis on, like, my personal stuff? And those videos actually did really well, but I don't want to turn this into the Raph complaining about his life channel. That would be not so good, I feel. <laughs> like, not so good for me in particular, because I don't want to become that kind of person. I feel, I feel super, con like, self-conscious about, like, every single time I go out here and do a video about something very personal, then um, I feel it always comes across as like whining and complaining and, you know, it's it's probably dumb, but it, 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 was, it, it is what it is. But that's also part of it, right? It's like the idea of like, at what point do you stop um, doing this just as like, I'll switch on the camera, I ramble for half an hour, I'll upload it and I don't think about it. At what point does that change to I actually have to take this thing seriously in a way and plan out what I want to do with this channel or what I want where I want to go with this? <clears throat> That's sort of like the, the the big problem that I'm facing. I've faced for a while, I guess. Um, it's the same thing like with the record labels. Like I didn't think about starting a record label and suddenly I had like a bunch of bands and I have <laughs> invested a shitload of money. You <laughs> come to think about it, like <laughs> when, once I realize it and I'm like, oh shit, like. I have to like um, approach this with more, with like a, a more sincerity, I guess, <laughs> because other people rely on it in like with the label more than here. But still, it's like I've, I feel I have some sort of responsibility towards all of you out there that watch this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe you really would be sad if I stopped making videos, or maybe there's something I could actually do that would make you feel happy or that you would really enjoy or like <laughs> maybe even something that would help you with wherever you are in your situations in your life i don't, I don't know <laughs> stranger things have happened <laughs> i guess <laughs> but that that's sort of the question that like once you realize and and that once you realize that there are other people out there that i'm not just screaming into the void even though it still feels a lot like screaming into the void from time to time it's like Sometimes the void screams back and then suddenly you have some responsibility towards the void. Not that I'm saying you are the void. You're not. You're amazing, right? But you see what I mean, right? Um, and that's sort of what one of the things that I'm trying to come to terms with because that would mean this is a commitment. And like, at what point is this a commitment? Was it a commitment when I actually went and bought a new camera? Because, you know, those things ain't cheap. <laughs> like, was that a commitment? Like, okay, I can still explain this away as something that I could also use for the record label to do some promotional stuff for the record label. I can still use an action cam for that. Don't worry. <laughs> but, like, other stuff. 
that I could invest in more. It's like, is that, you know, suddenly there's commitments and I'm not good with commitments is what I'm trying to say here. So there's certainly that. And then there's obviously um, uh, all the self-doubt. Um, there is has been a lot of self-doubt and there will always be a lot of self-doubt because I'm the kind of person who does <clears throat> either fly really high on whatever like level of adrenaline just like does stuff that is probably really not good and I'll regret later on or I'm just like sitting in the, <clears throat> this deep valley of self-doubt and I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> probably no one will like this. I'm probably, it all sucks and maybe people will not even tell me if it sucks and just like stay away or tell me it it's fine just to, you know, not insult me or whatever. That is also something that is always at the back of my mind. And I'm, I don't know how to get out of that in any way. This, it, it just will always be there, I feel. Um, I certainly, like, I see that when I, in, in summer, when I saw those numbers go, like, stagnate so harsh. I'm like, well, what could, what could be the reason? Is it maybe because it's summer? <laughs> and most people have better things to do than watch rambly YouTube videos. You know, go out there into like the actual fresh air and enjoy yourselves and stuff like that, you know. Or is it because my content just is really boring? Is it that I'm rambling far too long? Is it too specific? Is it, I don't know, the lack of uh, cool graphics? Is, <laughs> are the visuals actually okay? Would you like, you see what I mean? It's like, there's a bunch of questions out there, and some of them I could probably ask, answer myself, and some of them I can't answer myself. I will never be able to say, yes, the visuals of my videos are good, because I can't see them. I'm like, even if someone else tells me they're fine, there's always that nagging doubt at the end of, like, somewhere in the back of my mind, it's like, maybe they're not. Maybe I should actually get, like, really cool um, uh, thumbnails. That would probably help. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Maybe I should get actually like proper like editing in there and like cut out pauses and whatnot because you know all the stuff that I do here is one shot usually unless there's like there's jump cut usually because my camera cuts out because I'm using it for too long and it overheats. <laughs> but that's sort of like the thing. It's like I don't have notes. Should I try to actually structure my videos more? Would that help? Should I make shorter videos? Would that help? And that's sort of like the weird, that, that weird thing, because on the one hand, I'm doing this for myself, as I said, I'm doing this for myself, but it feels good to get some recognition, to get some feedback or whatever, it feels good to have that. And then you need to, I need to figure out how to walk that thin line between doing what I want to do, while also doing something that at least some of you still enjoy enough to actually, you know, keep watching or interacting with me. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of weird and I don't know what how to do these kind of things. So I'll probably just like keep on going and hope that some of you will actually, you know, tell me what you prefer, what you want, and then I can think about it and maybe do stuff or maybe don't do stuff. Which is once again the same thing with the record label and the personal stuff. It's like I started this as a channel talking out Malaz and stuff. Although, like, to be fair, I started fairly early on talking about other fantasy with, like, the um, old fantasy stuff like Robert E. Howard, the sword and sorcery shit, right? Which, I guess, uh, <laughs> some of you have actually watched, the rest have not, and, uh, and now when other YouTubers, booktubers come out and talk about Conan or whatever, <laughs> I always sit there and it's like, well, why are they getting all the views and I don't? Even though I was doing it before, it's like, well, probably they do it better, probably, or they just hit the right time and I didn't, or whatever. You know, you never know, but it's it's fairly difficult to um, keep away from that question, like, why them, not me? In these kind of things, which is dumb, because at the end of the day, everyone deserves all the attention they they get, and more, probably. But it's, it's always kind of there. But that's the thing, it's like, I started out talking about books, and then I'm like, should I keep this a channel about books because I guess most of you have come here to hear me talking about books, probably Milan's and maybe some other books that I talked about. So should I go beyond that? Because every time I do go beyond that, unless it's like a channel update, every time I go beyond that, like I talk about the record label, I talk about music, I talk about, like I haven't talked about politics yet outside of those book things. I guess it's 
fairly obvious for those of you that watch my videos regularly to kind of figure out where I stand politically, but, you know, <laughs> we'll see. Um, but it's like, if I do something like that, it it's like, will people still watch this? If I go and talk about my mental health or like my disability, is that annoying to you? Is that dragging in an audience that is only going to come to see me complain about how it sucks to be blind or whatever? Is this is this okay or will this in the end of, at the end of the day either like alienate some of you or others and I don't know. And it's it's very difficult to do these kind of things for me because I probably overthink. What I usually do in these cases is like if I feel that it's something that I want to do, I'll wait for a situation where I can just like actually switch off my brain, do the whole thing, upload it uh, before I um, <laughs> before I actually start thinking about it, and so it's done. That's sort of like how I do a lot of approach a lot of things, which is not a good like technique in the long run, but it's very much like how I try to convince myself to do things that I feel sometimes are right. So that's that's like another part of it um that where i literally just like doubt the the technical quality of what i'm doing here the the content quality of what i'm doing here am i rambling too much probably am i like hitting the int hitting interesting points am i adding something interesting to the conversation or not that those kind of questions definitely are always there for me and I'm, i have no idea how i'll continue with that if i go on do wheel of time which you kind of said i will do um if I get like pretty harsh on it, which there is a good chance that I will do that, at least from my memory of Eye of the World, I will not be kind to that book. Will that draw in a different crowd? Will that make the conversations that we have, if we have conversations down in the comments, will that make those more toxic, more, um, uh, yeah, more angry and toxic? Is that something that I want? Because, you know, there's channels out there that basically thrive on tearing down stuff. And they have, like, a very, very angry, very toxic community. And I, I don't want that. I, I, it's very difficult for me to think of this being a community. But it's at the end of the day, that's what it is. And that's, that, that's kind of what brings me to the next thing. is like the community side of things, right? I mean... I do have a community tab now, which is cool. Um, I guess that's, like... Look, the quick numbers run down. Like, YouTube gives uh, specific things to creators after they reach specific numbers. It used to be you need 1,000 uh, subscribers and then you get the community tab where you can make posts and people can, you know, talk about stuff. Um, they lowered that to 500 a couple of weeks ago, which is when I used it for the first time. So I have that now. The next big thing is obviously um, making money on YouTube. Not that you... Like, I mean, you don't make money on YouTube through ads unless you have, like, millions of views, which most of us don't have. What most YouTubers make money on is um, sponsorships, which I don't get, obviously. And most booktubers don't get until you reach a huge level, which I don't get. But, you know, that's, that's like, the next thing there. Um, the thousand subscribers... Um, also, you need 4,000 hours, watch hours, which means, like, over the last year, there, there, people must have watched at least 4,000 hours of view, of videos of your channel. Now, I don't have, I mean, I have the 4,000 view hours because I produce so much stuff, right? But I don't have the 1,000 subscribers. On the other hand, it, it sometimes feels like people only take you seriously if you have reached that kind of number. Like, unless you're at least, like, 1K subscribers, you're just like a, just like everyone else down there in the dregs of YouTube society. Which obviously is ridiculous because YouTube itself probably only takes you seriously if you have, like, more than 100K subscribers. But that's sort of like how it sometimes feels like when we attach too much meaning to numbers and like I don't know if I'll ever reach a thousand subscribers, probably not. Maybe, maybe, who knows? But that that's sort of like the next thing. But the the question then is like communities. Like I do have and I thought hard about like starting this and then people like Iskar Jarak convinced me to start the Patreon and I I kind of feel bad for the Patreon so far because I I promised to, you know, drink the beers and do the chairs and I <laughs> I slacked off on that, like, really hard, and I do very, very much apologize for that. <laughs> I will try to actually update date that and make it more workable for me, make sure that I do all the things that I promised. Um, I'll, I'll, those of you who actually, like, pledged enough to actually get 
me to knit you a hat or something. I'll write you and uh, ask you about your color, favorite colors and shit like that. I'll, I'll do all of that in the coming days, I'll promise. There's other things that I could probably do. I could put, like, those funny affiliate links. Now, if I talk about more different books, that might actually be a smart thing, because maybe I talk about a book and you suddenly decide that you really want to buy that, so maybe that's a good idea I should look into. Could be. But that, that's still not the community thing. The community thing, for example, would be something like a Discord server. I'm careful. I'm, I'm a bit wary to do that kind of thing because um, I feel there's already so many Discord communities out there, and for a community to actually work, you need enough people to actually show up and talk and whatnot. And I feel like with 600 subscribers, that's not enough people. Like the the, the main like I can probably think of the people commenting underneath this. Uh, these videos, um, and I probably know all of you by name if I actually concentrate, and it's like around 10 people. And some of those are already on other Discord servers that I'm a part of, which is mostly Iskar Jarak's The Unabridged Burners. Um, but then, that's sort of like the, the problem that I'm facing now. That was That's fine for all the time I've mostly been talking Malazan, and I'll still do all my Malazan stuff talking on Iskar Jarak's server. But on the other hand, if I go and talk Wheel of Time now, and new people will actually discover this channel, and because of me talking about Wheel of Time, do they want to go to Iskar Jarak's server? I don't know. But do I want to do do I want to start my own Discord community? I like I seriously don't know about these kind of things. I'll always say, like, well, maybe if I hit, like, a thousand subscribers, I might start my own Discord server. But then again, it also would feel like, almost like a betrayal of the Yonder Bridge Burners, because that's sort of where this whole thing started. <laughs> so, you see my dilemma there? It's like, I, I'm i very loyal to those kind of things, and I feel like they would be a bit of a betrayal, and I, I don't know. But on the other hand, if people like you, if people faithfully watching my videos, and I know there's a few of you, will actually, you know, would like to have a, like, community outside of YouTube to have, like, discussions on books and whatnot. Then maybe I should do that. Also, should I, should I, like, ask y'all to, you know, I don't know, follow me on Twitter or Instagram if you guys want to talk to me in person, like, personally, or, like, well, you can always write me an email, that's always fine. I have the, I have the email address down there. It's like, should I do more of that? I'm I'm always like care like I'm I'm a bit wary about doing these kind of things because I feel like I'm only I'm a guy with like well <laughs> probably 200 videos at this point but like <laughs> 685 subscribers and an average of like 20 to 30 viewers. I don't think of myself as a creator or whatever. It's, I, it's you know what I mean. It's like. It feels kind of pretentious for me to do these kind uh, to do the whole like oh and here's my Discord and here's this and here's that, so I'm 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 literally like asking you if you feel that I should do one of some of those things because you probably have a well if not better but a very different perspective on this whole thing than I have right so that's that's <laughs> that's something that I was wondering about a lot recently. And then there's obviously that other things like should I should I try to do some live streams because you know what I mean I am a very rambly kind of person as you have probably noticed by now I feel some of that works really well when I'm in conversation in actual conversation with people and not just like rambling into the void and then uploading it talking to other people like in podcasts there's like Obviously, the ongoing, hopefully ongoing, Dresden Files podcast kind of thing that uh, John and Cal are doing with me. Like, I mean, it's Cal that does the whole thing, and John and I come on and <laughs> rip Dresden Files novels apart. <laughs> but there will be more episodes of that. We're actually planning to record one tonight, if it works out, and otherwise in the next couple of days. And maybe, hopefully, Cal will finally upload the next couple of, like, episodes on his YouTube channel, Really Good and Kind, which you all should go and subscribe to if you haven't yet. 
I'm doing that. And I have another one that will hopefully also come to YouTube soon with my friend Will, where we talk about heavy metal, which is an entirely different thing. And it's currently only on like Anchor and probably Spotify at this point and all kinds of stuff. It's linked down below. Um, it'll hopefully come to YouTube and then I'll maybe talk a bit more about it. But that's like where I feel I really can offer something is in conversation with other people. I've never thought of myself as the kind of, you know, um, I don't know, entertainer kind of guy that can run everything like by himself. I feel I'm like, I can add to conversations. So, and for that, I need people to talk to me. Um, so doing live stream things, either with other like people on uh, guests or whatever, might be something that I should look into, which, you know, would come with its own like set of terrible challenges. Um, but that's something that might be that might be interesting to do so maybe that's something i don't know if you'd be interested in me doing that kind of stuff or you, you know you can actually like similar to like collabs with booktubers where you talk about a specific book or whatever like the recent one with Je uh, with jen and john about <laughs> about um by force alone but like more like broader stuff like that, that's a possibility but I, I'm also not sure if anyone would be interested in doing that, uh, watching that kind of stuff. So once again, I'm asking you if you if you think that's something you might be interested in. Because at the end of the day, while I'm doing a lot of this for myself, I'm also doing it very much for you guys, for all of you guys. Because as I said, that kind of feedback is certainly helping me a lot with like my daily struggles and whatnot. And I'm, I'm extremely extremely thankful for that and I would never have believed that I could actually keep going at one project for an entire year and still think and already plan about the uh, plan the second year I would never have thought that so <laughs> thanks for that <laughs> and, yeah like talking about stuff that I never finished like you remember when I did the video while about making the mead I never actually made a follow-up video where I you know, actually take that mead and, ta and taste it on video. Uh, because I'm an idiot. I've drunk it on video, but never mentioning that it is that stuff. <laughs> now, this is not that stuff. This is the other stuff that I made before when I tried to make the video and it didn't work out. Because me fucking up the camera stuff. <laughs> but I figured that might be a fitting drink for this kind of video. And that's sort of where I'll end this. Um, now, I'll do the assail videos for the next couple of days, uh, but if you're not currently following the assail read-along kind of thing, this is me like thanking you for actually sticking with me through all of 2021, which was a weird fucking year, and wishing you all a great 2022 that will hopefully be much better than 2021. <laughs> And I hope we'll, I'll see you in the comments or whatever, um, telling me what you think, um, telling me what you plan for 2022, telling me all that stuff, and, you know, maybe we'll actually meet somewhere in 2022 if traveling is allowed again. I'll certainly make sure that, <laughs> I mean, if you go to any kind of metal festival, chances are that I'll probably be there as well. <laughs> and in that case, I'd always be happy to buy you a beer and hang out with you for a bit. So, with those hopes, once again, thank you, each and every one, for actually still being here with me, <laughs> keeping up with me, <laughs> bearing with me. Thank you so very, very much. And uh, have a great 2022. Cheers. <laughs>